now we are going to be making kombucha leather or scoby bioplastics. Yeah, so this is two giant scobies that I grew in a Tupperware container that I separated and then I put some plant leaves in between to make this like really cool piece of art that I have hanging at home. So if you've ever had kombucha, you may have had the byproducts of what's known as a scoby shown here. So I'm actually making kombucha and when you make it, you use this big thing that looks like a big ring of snot that's called the SCOBY, which stands for a Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, SCOBY. And so the SCOBY has a bunch of microbes that carbonate, that produce CO2, that makes the kombucha fizzy and also gives it a lot of other interesting tastes. So what this is a big container of what started out as tea. We've got some tea right here uh, with lots of sugar in it for those microbes to eat. And we added um, some existing kombucha and a big scoby that I got donated from Foxtail Fermentation Product in San Jose, California, and that has now grown into some kombucha. So what we'll be doing is actually pouring out some of the kombucha into the growler here um, to drink later and to put in some new food for those microbes with this fresh sweet tea. And then we'll actually be growing rings of this kombucha bioplastics in petri dishes. Now you don't have to use petri dishes. You can use anything that is flat. This one I actually grew in, uh, you might see a, a Tupperware container <laughs> where there's like a lot of surface area for that scoby to grow. The scoby, this is an old scoby that has gone to the bottom, but the new scoby is actually growing on the top of the container here. And so each one of these will grow its own tiny scoby that we'll be using to make bioplastic discs. So inside of this container, it's a microbial soup. So just like the mothership is the big scoby, there's actually bacteria and yeast swimming around in this entire big container. And so what we want is we want those microbes to go in these petri dishes with the new food I just put in so they can grow a new scoby in every single little petri dish. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm literally just pouring out a little bit of that kombucha into each of these petri dishes. And that kombucha, because it's coming from the big one, contains that symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast that are just, they're called free living. They're just swimming around in there and they're getting be in every one of these petri dishes so a tiny new scoby can grow. All right, it's been a couple of weeks and you might remember these plates that we poured this kombucha out into and they have grown tiny little scobies inside of the petri dishes that we can dry to form a kombucha bioplastic. So how are we going to dye these guys with a cool, fun color? Well, these I dyed using just regular food coloring, but I thought I'd try something cool today and see if we could use a natural dye. I was really inspired by blues, and so I thought, what creates a natural blue color? Um, some pea flowers. So these are pea flowers, and I'm going to be brewing a pea flower uh, tea or tasan today to try to get a really nice blue color that I can add to my kombucha scoby. So I'm taking my pea flowers and I'm putting them into this teapot that I have. And I'm just gonna add some water to that and we'll see if it turns blue. So now we have our beautiful blue pea flower tea and something that the bacteria and yeast really like to eat inside of the scobies is sugar. So I'm just gonna add, this is just regular table sugar, I'm just gonna add a little bit of sugar to this. Turns out that the microbes also like to drink sweet tea, not just humans. So inside the plate, there is a tiny scoby. And what I'm gonna do is just pour in this blue tea into there. And you'll see it's gonna turn light blue. So these are some scobies that we started growing a couple weeks ago and that I already dyed several days ago. And you can see that there's really thick scoby in there. And now we need to dry it out. So because the sweet tea, it has a lot of sugar, these guys are really sticky. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna take it out of its Petri dish. Whoa, look at that. It's gonna slide out of there. <laughs> it's like a hockey puck of snot. 
And I'm actually gonna wash it off inside of this bowl just to kind of get some of the excess sugars out of there. Um, they'll stick to a lot of different stuff and then it's really hard to peel them off, but they actually don't stick very well to wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna harvest all of these by putting them on this wood block, um, then I'll put them out in the sun and then they'll dry into almost tissue paper like material um, that's really beautiful and it's depending a little bit on the dye. So that one was kind of a turquoise. This one's more of a deeper blue purple. So let's harvest this one. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me wash it off. So I'm just washing off the excess sugars to make it just a little bit less sticky. Whoa, you can see there's a red spot in there. So I'm gonna harvest the rest of the scobies. Um, I actually grew like about a hundred of them. And we'll see what they look like with the tissue paper when they're done. Whoa, look at that.